Hey, Brian here, Signal Chain. I'm going to uh, take you through the process of how I silk screen all my pedal enclosures. All right, here's on the table kind of everything you'll need to, to print. So uh, you'll need the screen, of course. I had this made by, made by a, a local screen printer. And um, I mean, you can buy kits to do it yourself, but it'll just come out way better if you have it made. This is a 305 count. Um, I think that's a 120T in metric. And um, that's just to get really fine detail. Um, let's see which one, like on the wet, wet, dry font here, it's very, very small. And um, on my logo, everything will get um, really crisp. So you have to have the screen made. Um, and you do that with either Illustrator or um, Inkscape or something that can give you an SVG file, a vectorized file. I first made the mistake of doing it in GIMP, and so um, it wasn't vectorized. I had to redo the whole thing. Anyway, on the on the 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 jig here, I made um, a little space for each pedal, so the housing sits in there and it won't move. And on here, I've marked out exactly where, so that's the UVM, where the, um, oops, there it is. There it is. You line up the cross there and the line here, and everything is lined up. So, um, you got to get these hinges as well so that you can lift it up and move it. Um, the jig for everything to sit on. And then I've got here... Um, where is it? The ink. I chose a solvent-based ink because um, it's really durable. It, it like melts into the polyurethane of the of the um, enclosure, and it doesn't require a top coat after. Here's the white, and then you'll need a dilutant. Mine has to be diluted down five to ten percent. So I put some, I put a little bit of ink in these, um, you know, jam jars, and then dilute it down by weight mix it up and then it's ready to go and this this was the smallest one they sold so i've probably got ink for the next decade <laughs> and uh so yeah dilutant that'll dilute it down and clean it up and then some mineral spirits as well to clean it up you'll need a squeegee to pull with um, some gloves to protect your hands and tons of rags to uh clean up all the ink and um the only thing, the, the guy who sold me the screen said that I cannot put water on it. You can only clean it with uh, solvents or special, you know, screen printing things. He said if you put a drop of water on it, the whole thing is ruined. And I couldn't tell you why. If you can tell me in the comments, I'd be glad to learn. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, change camera angles now. Get up over the screen and show you how I pull some ink. Alrighty, so I've got the Sirius, that's the one I'm going to do now. I've got it lined up in the axis here. Um, and the next step is to make sure your hands are clean before you handle the housings. Um, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is when, you, uh, when you're making these, you have to, uh, when you make your jigs and everything, you got to make sure you're off contact and that's the space between... Um, what you're printing and the actual screen. So you got to figure out your off contact. Um, you got to figure out how fast you want to pull, how, um, how fast you want to pull. Sorry, I'm trying to do this at the same time. And um, how fast you want it, your ink to dry. Now mine dries um, just at an ambient temperature. Here we go, I'll pull here, a little bit of ink. Nice even pressure and let's see how that went. Here's the housing. So that one's not too bad. A little bit thick. I'm gonna have to redo that one. Make sure it's clean. Put a new one in here. And there we go, that one's better. So, you'll probably ruin a couple. I definitely ru ruined a couple at the beginning. Either with having too thick or too thin ink. 
So, you know, you might have to, if you can have a, if you have a coder that you can do it with, you might need to buff out, you know, any mistakes or anything like that and redo it. So, uh, these ones are turning out pretty good. There's a little bit of overflow on one of them, but that'll just buff out. And last one, I only have five of those. There we go, not too bad. Now, the cleanup process is kind of a pain. I used to get all the ink as I can back into the jar. Squeegee all that back in there. That's probably good. And then, um, let's see, I'll get a rag here. And I'll use the dilutant here to clean everything. Get that, close it up. And this is why, um, I mean, for me, I chose to put all the models on the same screen and it makes it um, a little time consuming because you, I have to clean it in between each model. I mean, if I had 50 of each, it wouldn't be, if I had 50 to do of each, it wouldn't be a problem. But since this is, you know, the beginning of my operation and, uh, Kind of low, you know, small scale. I'm having to do only five, five to ten model each at a time. So I have to clean it up and then wait for everything to evaporate off because I also made the mistake of not letting the dilutant uh, come off all the way and then, or wipe it off all the way. And then if you put the screen back down while it's got dilutant on it on top of a pedal, it melts the, the polyurethane since it's made of, since it's solvent based, it just melts right through it. And this is the longest process here. So I'll probably cut the video a couple times or speed it up maybe. You have to get the underside as well because the ink goes through the underside. Now, some people, see I, I pulled the Sirius here and some people will tape over other models if they have those, you know, I could have put tape down all here to make cleanup easier. The problem is that um, the tape leaves behind this sticky residue and so it makes cleanup even harder. Also, I forgot to mention, you gotta, you gotta make sure you have clean fingers when you grab the housings to put them in the jig because on my first time doing this, um, see my fingers are all covered in ink. I bet a, a professional person would probably do it way cleaner than I am right now. But on these first runs when I was doing it, I would grab the housing and then I realized after they had cured that there were little fingerprints on either side. So I had to buff those out too. It was kind of a pain in the ass. And you really gotta make sure you get all of the ink out because if it cures in the screen, those holes get gunked up and you won't ever be able to print through it again. All right, same thing as last time, except with white. So I've got it lined up in the axis there, X and Y. Pop that out, wipe it off, pop it in, and now I'm get my ink ready. This one's been in there for a while, so it's a little thicker than the, the black one. Come on. There we go. I need to find a, a um, oops, 
a squeegee that's thinner, like the thickness of a petal, probably that much, because I have to lubricate the entire thing or else it pulls on the screen. There we go. So push down and pull. And it should be. The white pops like that, I like that. That's the Odyssey fuzz. And we have five of them to do. Oops. Wipe that off. Huh, I have to buff that up. There's a little spot. There we go. Position it and pull. Position and pull. There we go. And now there's tons of variables of, you know, squeegee angle and pressure and all that stuff. And um, again, it's all just, for me just been trial and error. I try and get it at a 45 degree, degree angle, push down fairly hard, and then I try not to go too fast with the pull so that the, uh, that one might need a little buffing. I try not to go too fast with the pull so that it can evenly distribute throughout the whole thing. Last one. Pull. There we go. Oops, I forgot to wipe that one off and it's all dusty. Nothing got in there. I think got any ink, so we're fine. And clean up again. So I'll speed through this again because the cleanup process is rather boring. You gotta make sure you get the squeegee really clean because if ink dries onto the uh, squeegee, you'll have a little you know, hump in it or whatever. And when you pull, it won't pull evenly. You gotta get it real, real clean. And the screen too, this, everything's important to clean the screen. If you don't clean that, it plugs up the mesh and then, you know, you've blocked off a little section of the print. So, getting everything dry, is, er, dry cleaned is very important. That's a good pull. Um, so yeah, I guess that's uh, all I can share. Um, I'll just stop talking now. I'm going on. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Uh, all the models that I'm printing today are available on my website, signalchain.com. Thanks.